Colds are age old. Why is it that if I had a cold now, I can get another cold? Colds are one of the number one reasons that adults are absent from work and that kids miss school. Why is it that everyone is getting them? How do you treat a cold and how do you prevent a cold? We're gonna answer all those questions today. Hey guys, I don't know about you guys, but one of my favorite comedians is Trevor Noah. You know why? Because he always asks the relevant questions. Well, what became relevant to me as a healthcare provider was when I got a cold last week. And I said, well, how do I like prevent it? What is this thing? How do you treat it and what do you do? Hey guys, I'm Dr. Nene, a US trained cardiac, thoracic, and vascular surgeon and a general surgeon. As a healthcare innovator and a health tech innovator, I wanna empower you to your best health ever. On this channel, we will share evidence-based medicine from all of us to you through our experiences and training about health and healthcare. The goal is to help you make informed decisions about your own health as well as that of your loved ones. We're here for you, so don't hesitate to reach out. So let's talk a little bit about colds. Colds are age old. In the olden days when people were seafarers, people were finding that you would have a cold once, but during the seabound journeys, that no more colds would happen. And so what became clear is colds were transmitted between people and not just out of the air or something like that. Now, the real question is, how did that happen and when did they discover what was going on with colds? Second question, which I always have is, why is it that if I had a cold now, I can get another cold? We're gonna answer all those questions today. Colds are defined as a syndrome of symptoms which include uh, inflammation of the nose, runny nose, a scratchy throat, um, and taken together result in a fair amount of issues every year. In fact, colds are one of the number one reasons that adults are absent from work and that kids miss school. So now we know that colds are very common. And the real question is, why is it that everyone is getting them? So there's a lot of wives' tales about when the weather changes, everyone gets sick. There's a lot of uh, things about people getting sick. But in truth, most people have two to three colds per year uh, in adults. And in children, it can be as high as seven to 12 incidences per year. And the peak season in the uh, northern countries and in the west it is in the winter time. And it's thought that because everyone is indoors, this is why it occurs. By comparison, in temperate zones like where I live in India now, uh, we have colds year round. Um, but certain types of illnesses which are associated with that um, can be worse in the monsoon, um, and that includes influenza and other strains. The real issue with colds is cold is a grab bag term. And in fact, there's 200 different viruses which can lead to it, but over 50% of them are caused by rhinoviruses. And typically with colds, as opposed to flus, you'll get a constellation of symptoms which include a runny nose, uh, redness and inflammation, a stuffy nose, as well as a sore throat. A typical cold will start uh, approximately two to four days uh, after you've been exposed and can last for about seven to 10 days in an uncomplicated situation. Most colds, unlike flus, are not associated with systemic symptoms, meaning that you don't usually have body aches and infrequently have headaches or other symptoms. Uh, as opposed to a flu, which is caused by a different set of viruses, which often has systemic symptoms and can lead to lower respiratory issues in the way of pneumonias. So the next question is, why is it that, that you can get colds again and again? And why is it that we can't create a vaccine? And the reason for that is, there's over 200 viruses which give you similar symptoms, 50% being the rhinoviruses. And each of these have different antigen-specific uh, surface entities which your antibodies are clued into. So what that means in simple terms is that every cold virus is a little bit different. And therefore, though you fought one cold virus, the next virus may not have the same surface antigens by which your body's immune system can recognize it and fight it. And as a result of that, you are continuously at risk for these ailments. 
The good news, though, is that in most cases, colds are self-limited, and they will get better on their own. So the clinical manifestations of colds typically start with a scratchy throat, and then can further uh, have a stuffy nose, which is thought to occur because you get a nonspecific immune response, and with that, complement fixation and different compounds which cause vasodilation of the uh, venous plexus in your nose. That will be something important later as we talk about this. The uh, both the arteries and the veins will vasodilate and cause nasal congestion. At the same time, you'll get disruption of the surface of the cells, which will then lead to profuse uh, fluid uh, dripping out, and this will, is what will cause postnasal drip. About 30% of colds will also be associated with a cough, and it's not clear whether some of the virus actually goes down into your lungs or whether it's from the uh, drip or the postnasal drip, which occurs from the leaky membranes and, and capillaries in the nose going down the back of your throat. But in either case, um, these are the symptoms which prevail. So in this chart, it tells you exactly what the differences are between a cold and a flu, and we've talked about them. Great question which I always ask is, how can you tell if you have a cold or if it's just an allergy? And most of the data suggests that if you have itchiness in your nose or in your eyes without the other symptoms, and it's uh, limited to the time of day, like in the morning time, or exposure to some type of antigen or allergic uh, trigger, then more than likely it is an allergy, and that can actually be treated with a different set of medications. Now you know about how you can get the colds, you know how often they happen, you know why they happen. How do you treat a cold and how do you prevent a cold? Let's talk about therapy first. The therapy in a cold has to be directed to the symptoms. In the case of nasal congestion and uh, rhinorrhea or redness of the nose or nasal discharge, there's a few things which work well. You can either take them systemic in the way of antihistamines, which have been shown to decrease some of the uh, rhinorrhea or redness that you get in inflammation. You can also uh, use uh, over-the-counter um, surface agents like Otrovin or other agents. But remember, you can only use those for one to three days. Otherwise, you can get a rebound phenomenon where the arteries actually vasodilate and you will actually have worse congestion. So you can use that for one to three days, which could get you over the worst parts of the cold, and then after that you stop. The last thing is that uh, doing other things like neti pots and or uh, using inhalers or using other things are indicated in patients who have histories of asthma or reactive airways, or alternatively, if you have a lot of uh, discharge, which is blocking your sinuses or blocking other areas, and that may be beneficial. The last thing with colds is, are there specific treatments which have been looked at other than pharmaceuticals? And the answer is yes. One of the compounds that was extensively studied was zinc. Zinc is a naturally occurring mineral, and it's one which you do take sometimes for prevention, um, but in the case of colds, the results have been uh, somewhat controversial. In vitro, meaning in the lab setting, it bl blocked 3C protease, which was a potent inhibitor of viral replication. But when those same results were taken into the uh, human situation in vivo, um, they weren't conclusively and reproducibly able to show that it always decreased it, although there were some studies which decreased the duration as well as the intensity of a cold. So the question is, do these zinc compounds really uh, help you with a cold? The answer is, it's not conclusive. If it doesn't cause you the nausea or have other issues and it doesn't hurt you, it might help. So who knows, maybe worth a try. The second thing is echinacea. Echinacea has been a grab all for illnesses and an herbal supplement which people have been using. The original studies with echinacea did suggest perhaps that it could help with some types of colds, but the problem with echinacea is it comes in three different types of species with varying uh, quantities and strengths. And in the studies which were done, it was not reproducible 
to show conclusively that it always prevented or decreased the effects of coal. If it makes you feel better, feel free to do it, but the evidence does not conclusively suggest that it helps. Finally, there's one interesting thing about the colds which we were looking at and which helps us. Viruses are spread by various means, but we think about small particles, large particles, and direct contact. In the case of small particles, you have aerosolization where the small things can float for very long distances. And particularly in the corona epidemic, we later found out that this was the prominent means of spreading coronavirus through airborne particles. By comparison, large particles are droplets which don't go very far, but they land on things and can create something called fomites, which have the active virus in them for some time. Similarly, hand-to-hand -hand contact, when you sneeze and you touch someone else, may act as a means for transferring it. What's been shown in colds conclusively through different models is that colds are spread by large particles and by direct contact. And so in preventing colds, the best ways you can prevent them is by not being in contact with someone who has a cold, at least in direct contact or nearby where they can sneeze on you and disseminate particles or alternatively through shaking hands or uh, other types of exchange of fluid. And similarly, you need to wash your hands after you've been in contact with those. And what's interesting with uh, coronavirus is that washing hands was a big deal, but in truth, most of coronavirus probably was spread by airborne means, not by large droplets and by uh, direct contact. The conclusion is that colds will continue to happen. There's no vaccines which are there because there's so many serotypes and so many varieties that you will never form a consistent uh, protection to this in your immune system. The truth is there that if one virus you get and you develop an immune response, the chance of getting that virus is less. But when there's 200 different viruses, 50% of them being rhinoviruses, the likelihood of you having a cold is pretty significant in any given year. In fact, two to three times per year is what was seen. Interestingly, in the pandemic, when everyone was wearing masks and fairly isolated, many of us did not have colds. But ultimately, the good news is colds can be treated with symptomatic care. They are fairly uh, self-mitigating, uh, meaning that you just have to treat the symptoms. And within seven to 10 days, most people will resolve. And the first two to three days are the worst. So there's hope in sight. I'm sorry that you have a cold. I'm sorry I just went through it. And the truth is I had more than a cold. I had a flu in spite of having a pneumovax and a influenza shot this year and being triple vaxxed with boosters for COVID. I still got a virus. So what it shows you is your immunity is only good for so much. And we knew that from my other uh, talk, which I gave on the flu shot, which suggested that the flu shot only covers about 40 to 60% of the viruses. But so long as there will be people, there will be colds. And the bottom line is we'll all get through it together. But now you know how to prevent it, you know how to treat it, you know what causes it, and you know what you can do to help. If you like what we said, as always, leave a uh, like down below. Make sure you give me the comments and questions you have. And always remember that I leave the details of where the information came from because I like to use evidence-based international standards for this. And this is no different. Most of these are from the National Library of Medicine and the NIH. Um, finally, don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel so you can get the latest updates. And also share this with your friends because colds are common. And honestly, they are miserable for all of us. And if we can prevent them, as, as I've always said, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And this is one that's so doggone common that you can help everyone out in the neighborhood by protecting yourself. Last thing is if you're sick, stay home. Don't get everyone else infected. I know you want to get out and party and do everything, but the bottom line is you'll do, be doing yourself a favor because you'll be miserable and doing everyone else around you a favor. Anyway, love you guys. Thanks for joining us, and I look forward to talking to you soon.